In this video, we're going to go over the 2018 AP Chemistry Free Response question number two. So, in the first two, uh, in the first of two experiments, a student is assigned the task of determining the number of moles of water in one mole of magnesium chloride, some sort of number water. So, to me, this looks like a hydrate question. Um, the student collects the data, and it's in this table, and we can worry about that in just a minute. It says, explain uh, why the student can correctly conclude that the hydrate was heated a sufficient number of times in the experiment. So if I look at uh, our sample, we have some sort of dish, a container. We add our sample to there. That causes the mass to go up. And then we heat it three times, and as we heat it, the mass goes down every time and if you have performed a hydrate experiment uh, you know that we heat until we get a constant mass and so what i would say here is that essentially no water was evaporated between the second and third heating uh, thus indicating all the water is out Okay, now I understand that between the second and third heating, it does change by one uh, thousandth. It actually goes up a little bit, but for all intents and purposes, no more water is being lost, okay? There is some level of air that occurs in a lab no matter what. So in B, it says use the data in the table to calculate the total of moles of water lost when the sample was heated. So um, I'm going to use just the last heating. It really wouldn't matter on the AP test if you used uh, either of those two. But I'm going to use the last one. And then uh, the first one before we even heat it, and that's uh, those numbers. So I'm going to do initial mass. And that one was 25.825 grams. And then, um, and I spelled initial wrong, goodness. And then um, mass after third heating and I'm going to subtract and I'm going to take 23.977 grams and when I subtract I'm going to get 1.848 grams of H2O lost that is what evaporated and they wanted us to get moles of water so at this point in your chemistry career, you should know the molar mass of water. It's not a big deal. Um, there's 18.02 grams of H2O for every one mole of H2O. And when we do that, we're going to get 0 0.1026 moles of H2O lost. Okay. Now, and I think that was B part one. So now we're going to get to B part two. And typically, uh, how it works in AP, uh, chemistry at least, is if you have a part one and part two, they're going to be related somehow. Sometimes they're related a lot, sometimes not so much. And we want to get the uh, formula of the hydrated compound. So what we need to do is think about uh, MgCl2, some amount of waters. We heated it, and when we heated it, we get magnesium chloride and hydrate. We'll have to get a number for there. And then... Um, we get some amount of waters, and N is our coefficient, and we know that that was 1.848 grams of water. So um, if I take the mass of sample after third heating, and that was, what was that, 20. 3.977 grams, and I subtract from it the mass of the container, the only thing left in the container after the third heating should just be the anhydrate 
the anhydrous magnesium chloride. And so that'll be uh, 22.347. And when I do that, I'm going to get uh, 1.630 grams of anhydrate. Uh, but we don't want the formula of um, the hydrated compound. So if you remember those steps, get moles uh, and then divide by small. So we already have, what was it? 0 0.1026 moles of H2O. And here we need to take 1.63 grams of magnesium chloride. We'll get the mag, uh, molar mass of magnesium chloride as 95.20 grams of MgCl2 for every one mole of MgCl2. And when we do that, we get uh, 0.01712 moles of MgCl2. Now we can divide by small. We always expect the anhydrate to be small, so divide by 0 0.01712, 0 0.01712, and we're gonna get one magnesium chloride, and we never expect to multiply to whole. We always expect a, a pretty much a whole number. I get 5.992, which is essentially six. So after all that work, the answer for this one, uh, B part two, is magnesium chloride, and this would be called uh, hexahydrate, so 6H2O. Okay, now this is a long FRQ, so we're going to keep going. Um, in part C now, it says a different student heats the hydrate in an uncovered crucible, and some of the solid spatters out of the crucible. This spattering will have what effect on the calculated mass of water lost? So if you've done a hydrate lab, there's always inevitably some amount of spattering. And what the spattering does is it makes it appear mathematically that you have more water that's being lost than truly is. So the spattering will make it seem as though more water is lost from the hydrate um, than actually is. Um, let me make sure I'm answering the question that they ask. What effect will this have on the calculated mass of water lost? So I need to make sure I actually answer that question. Thus, the calculated mass of water lost will seem higher. And then I, I'm going to add, although I don't think that it's necessary with what they asked, but just for conversation because it's good to know, um, when the math is done, the magnesium chloride sample will seem more hydrated. Okay, now, let's, we got part C done. Now I'm gonna work on part D. They say we've got a second experiment and a student is given a 2.94 gram mixture containing anhydrous magnesium chloride and potassium nitrate to determine the percent by mass of magnesium chloride. So when I hear that, that's gonna be grams of magnesium chloride over the 2.94 grams total, and then percent times by 100. So that's that formula. Sometimes it's easy to goof up on that formula, but it's not anything more than that. The student uses excess silver nitrate to precipitate the chloride ion as silver chloride. Okay, so starting with the 2.94 gram sample of the mixture dissolved in water. Briefly describe the steps necessary to quantitatively determine the mass of the silver chloride precipitate. Okay, so um, what we need to do is, and I, I might be going overboard here just because I want to cover my bases, but one, we're going to add excess silver nitrate to ensure 
all of the MgCl2 reacts. Okay, that's first thing. If we want all of it to precipitate a silver chloride, we need to make sure all of it reacts. And second, we're going to filter the silver chloride precipitate, which you can abbreviate PPT. Um, from the remaining excess solution. Okay, so we just want the solid that is formed. Um, we will uh, wash the precipitate with uh, water. And typically, I like to say distilled water just to make sure that we know that it's pure water. Wash the precipitate with distilled water to ensure all remaining uh, solution is gone. And then uh, four, we're going to let this dry. So let the precipitate dry completely. Um, I probably use an oven if I was doing this, but we don't need to get into that kind of detail here. Um, I'll just write it, maybe use an oven. Um, five, and then we're gonna mask the precipitate after drying. And then six, We're going to subtract away whatever filter paper mass we had. So that way, let me make sure I answer the question. They say, uh, briefly describe the steps. And they, they use the word briefly, which means that they don't want you, know, you to just go on and on and on. So I think we've done that. In part E now... They say the student determines the mass of the silver chloride precipitate to be 5.48 grams. On the basis of this, uh, we will need to calculate the following, the number of moles of magnesium chloride. So in E, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the reaction. And we have just a simple double replacement reaction of silver nitrate plus magnesium chloride. And the precipitate that we get, they tell us it's silver chloride. And so we're going to get magnesium nitrate. Uh, left over, all nitrates are aqueous, and I wrote nitrate wrong here, it's NO3. And we have two of them. Um, magnesium chloride will be aqueous and silver nitrate will be aqueous. And then to get this balanced, I'll put a two there and a two there. So what they asked is they asked for the moles of magnesium chloride. They gave us 5.48 grams of silver chloride. So we just need to mole bridge to the magnesium chloride. So that's not going to be so bad. 5.48 grams of silver chloride. We'll get the molar mass of silver chloride for every one mole of silver chloride. Oops. And then there's two moles of AgCl for every one mole of MgCl2. And that molar mass is 143.32 grams uh, per mole. And so we get 0 0.0191 uh, moles of MgCl2. And that's E part one. We have a part two, so that means that they're related. And they just want to know the percent by mass of the magnesium chloride in the original mixture. That's going to be this formula. So I'm just going to copy this and bring it down here. So what I need to probably do one step further, and I don't know why they didn't have me do this uh, in part one, but sometimes AP does this, is that in one mole of MgCl2, there's going to be 95.2 grams of MgCl2 and we get 1.82 grams of MgCl2. Now, there's 1.82 grams of MgCl2 for every, uh, or in the whole mixture. I don't know if I've done this right, but I feel good about it because I, I don't wanna get a number higher than 2.94 grams of the total because it doesn't make sense that we could have over a 100% um, composition of magnesium chloride here. 
So times it by 100 and I get 61.9% magnesium chloride.